Yeah, so I'm fine. opening up the commission disability commission meeting at five after five. Um, this meeting is being taped and recorded. Um, first, if we can go around and do introductions, and we'll start over here with Councilor Large. Yep, City Councilor Marianne Large. Okay, James Winston, member. Gay Ford, member. Leticia Ward. None. Nanda. Yeah. Nanda. Can I just explain something? You don't have to go right up to you. Oh, Simon. You can just yes, push it up to you a little bit like that. I don't think these were here. We were here last time. There you go. I have no idea. I know you're learning. Yeah, I think they were. And I'm Pat Shaughnessy, the ADA coordinator and director for the Senior Services and Senior Center. Um, I'd like to welcome Leticia Ward who has been reappointed, or I should say appointed because you were here and then you were gone to college and then now you're back. So you have been appointed again as a member. And she's but been waiting a long time to get yeah. back on here. So wait too long. We're glad to have you. Um, and I apologize, you were all sent the minutes today because um, I had just received them at the end of last week. Um, so I don't know if people had a chance to go over them. Um, yes. There are some copies over there, so um, if anybody would like to discuss yeah. them before we take a vote. She had that she should have this. It's kind of small print, but... Oh. Is, um... You know the girl with the blonde hair, she's still doing it? Um, the one who used to... Oh, the oh, secretary Ruth. group? Yeah, yeah. Ruth, she's not here. Ruth is not here today. So. Oh. So I'll, I'll make the minutes too. I will do it. I'll, I'll be able to watch the team. I, Patty, I think if we look at number one, mm -hmm. yes. um, the spelling, it should be, I think, B E I N G. Oh. Yes, yeah, so it was being recorded. Sure. Yeah. So there's a. Typographical here in number one. I'm still reading it. Yeah, please. Now, what do we mean by? I think when I had talked about it, purchasing a bench that we would place it with the other benches on the side of the wall. Yep. Correct. On here to purchase a bench to be placed outside the door of the senior center. That could be the front door or the yeah. back door. But I think we know it's this door. I think that was your intent. These yeah, doors right here. Oh uh, yeah. So um, the um, <laughs> amendment would be in number four, outside the doors of the senior center where the disability commission members enter. Yes. the front door and the back. Because I know that was what your intent was. Yeah. Okay, so that would make change. change. Yep. Um, I think I have a motion. Are there other comments about the minutes before we accept the amendments and? I'm reading them. Yep. I have a question for you, Patty. Does it have to do with the minutes? Yeah. No, okay, so you can hold on and we'll We'll get to that. We'll have a chance for other kind of questions and answers. Okay. Thank you. You're okay. Um, we'll have to talk about it with our agenda because right now, looking at this agenda for item number five for the month of February. So once we get onto our agenda, I'm going to ask that we do some changing for next month. So that you yeah, can bring that up for discussion. Okay, anything else anyone's finding? No. Okay, so does someone want to make a motion? I accept the meeting I'm sorry. minutes. Wait. Oh, I know I keep hearing you from back there, but under uh, new business, it's senior center? Is it no? Yeah, senior. S E N I O R. So minutes. Um, so we have to go back and make that. So there's correction. three amendments. B, 
being is spelled incorrectly to be spelled B-E-I-N-G. Um, where the bench is going to be located is outside the door of the senior center where the disability commission members enter for their meeting and then senior needs to be spelled correctly. Right, also to on that new business, number one, Patricia Shaughnessy, ADA coordinator, informed us that there is a list being compiled now that will be available at the front desk of the senior center. I mean, I think the comma should be taken out, being compiled now, that will be available at the front desk at, of the senior center. Okay, so there's another remove the comma. At new business. Number one, after list. So with those four amendments, Motion made by Miriam LaBarge, Councilor Miriam LaBarge. Seconded by? I second it. And? Is brainstorming all one word? Yes, it can be, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen that in a long time. It's a long word. <laughs> um, although, uh, any more discussion? No. Okay, <laughs> so all those in favor? Aye. Against? Abstain? Okay, motion passes. Okay, so tonight we have, let me just put my agenda on. And we have, uh, and I'll let you introduce yourself so that you can pronounce your last name correctly for me. Um, and this is um, in regards to a crosswalk concern on Hampton Avenue, which will be discussed. And we have two other members of the public, um, which uh, the public has the ability to um, have comments. So we usually do that at the beginning, and I did not do that. So um, you can do your presentation, Zane, and then um, if, if you're, the two of you would like some um, time to speak to it as well. Okay. My name is Zane Nelske. I live at 20 Hampton Avenue, and I'm also currently the president of Hampton, um, Hampton Court Community Association. So, it's come to our attention over the last few years that uh, it's difficult crossing Hampton Avenue, uh, especially if you have any kind of impairment walking. Um, and for anyone during the winter when snow banks are, are, um, are against between the street and the curb and the sidewalk. Let me, uh, I'll, I'll pass these out and explains and I'll, I'll walk through what our proposal was. So we went to the, the city, specifically the uh, Transportation and Parking Commission, uh, requesting that a, a crosswalk be added. Thank you. map in a second so we we went to the park the transportation parking commission and requested that uh, a crosswalk be added on Hampton Avenue opposite okay. your paper's hitting against here oh. yeah just put, push the mic here you go yeah. thank you okay. that a crosswalk be added currently there's no crosswalk between Pleasant Street and Old South Street along the entire length of, of uh, Hampton Avenue, which is approximately um, I agree to that actually. I think it's about four hundred feet. Excuse me, do you have one more of those for our chair? Oh yeah, sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, no, it's more like a thousand feet, I think. So there's no crosswalk there. Now what we learned was, and, and we were requesting, well, let me, let me speak to this map. So this, this is a map that um, north is up top. Uh, Hampton Court Apartments are over on the right hand, upper right hand area, it's labeled Hampton Court Apartments. And there's a dash line across Hampton Avenue, what we call it our preferred location. The reason we did that is because 
Uh, we were told that the city does not want to add any mid-block crosswalks to, to uh, any streets. So the other location that we identified is not a mid-block crosswalk because Kirkland Avenue is actually a street. So we, talk, we call that the city location. And the preferred location is opposite of w, WHMP. Um, there is a, a road there, but it's not technically a street although it functions as a street. And anybody, if you asked anybody, it would, they would say, yes, that's a street. Um, but technically it's not. So that's why it is a mid-block crosswalk. Um, so we went to the, we asked that this request be on their agenda. It took about two months to get on the agenda, although we came and made public comment. And it was finally, and we had uh, conferences with people uh, there, the police chief, the, one of the, the new traffic engineer, people like that. And um, we finally were able to present the case. It was, um, uh, some people were against it and some people were in favor of it. Um, and the people who were against it felt that crosswalks are deceptively um, safe. That actually people are, are more careful crossing the street when there isn't a crosswalk. This is what we were told. It's not what I believe. Um, and that if there is a crosswalk, people assume that a car will stop, so they just walk into the crosswalk without looking both ways. Um, so, so uh, it, it currently, so in that meeting, there was a motion to uh, for the DPW to do a traffic study, which is would be a typical preliminary step prior to proposing a crosswalk. <coughs> And after some discussion, the motion was withdrawn. And uh, instead, uh, it was asked that the uh, director of DPW, who was Ned Huntley at the time, uh, to go and make an informal survey of the street to see if the, quote, geography of the street was conducive to a crosswalk. What that means is, is the speed of the cars such that they could stop in time uh, where the location is. Were, excuse me, were they actually suggesting a traffic study or a traffic analysis at that site? Um, initially, but it was withdrawn to do this sort of informal. Informal? Informal, um, correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, an informal look at the streets, geography was the word that was used. Um, because uh, the, uh, at least Ned felt that, you know, to make sure that it was even possible to crosswalk before doing this big study, which is expensive. They also made, us, made it clear to us that there are a lot of studies backed up right now, and there'd be quite some time before that could happen. So now, getting back to Hampton Court, there are 70 apartments and seven townhouses. We estimate there's somewhere between 130 and 150 residents. I'm sorry, seven. Um, how many townhouses? Townhouses. Yeah, and, and how, how many, many townhouses? Seven. Seven townhouses and oh. 70, seven zero apartments. S 70 apartments and seven townhouses. Correct. That's all part of our complex. We have oh. shared parking, parking lot. How many children? Well, it varies a lot. Right now, um, do you count teenagers? To me, I think that's important. Yeah, I would say, well, there's one newborn. <laughs> um, there's one or two infants, you know, like say under yeah. five. And then there's uh, one. What about 10 or so? There's some. Out of the 77. About that I'm sorry? Of young, Out of these young teenagers, yeah. Yeah, there's Pardon? about. Half a dozen teenagers. It varies. There used to be a few more. Some people move out. There's, you know, there's a bit of turnover. Um, that's a good point. You know, we'll look into that. But um, and the school bus stops uh, a little below the city location. Mm -hmm. um, the in terms of um, adults, uh, they're. There are currently three people who use wheelchairs. There used to be five, two just moved out. 
So we never know who's going to come in. Um, and then there's probably six to eight people who use either walkers or canes. Out of the, we estimate the population is about somewhere between 130 and 150 total. Yeah. Um, and then that, that, that's just the residents. Then there's the businesses, and there probably are something like 30 to 40 employees in the businesses. And How many businesses? Uh, let's see, there's one, two, one, two, three, four, five, I'm just counting our building, mm -hmm. five, six, seven, eight, eight, I think, and there's, there's, a, there's a vacancy right now. There might be nine and ten total. So some of them are highly public, like the uh, Public Defender's Office, mm -hmm. HAP, HAP has an office there. Uh, so there are a lot of people coming and going. It's hard to, to know exactly. Now, our, our parking lot is for residents only. So if people are visiting residents or businesses, they have to park in the Armory Street. And the way they cross is really, by anecdotal observation, where we say the preferred location is. Are you talking about... No, that's businesses on that side. This is WHMP radio station. That's a crosswalk going across. Yep. So your parking is down here, correct? Behind, yeah. In behind. And <coughs> you ask us in there because I can see the entranceway. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want to point out something about that. Because I have some concerns about curb cutting. Is there curb cutting at all on this side of the road of where those apartments are? I do know where the businesses are. I have a friend who has an attorney's office in that area. How do people actually access with a wheelchair? That's my question. Well, Dominic can probably talk to that because we demonstrated That's it to important the to me. police chief. See that driveway you just pointed out? Yep. She goes down to that, actually she goes further than that. There's another driveway beyond that at the townhouses. Where the bushes are further down. Yep. Crosses there, and on the other side, there's a, there's a, um, uh, there's a, a gap in the curb, and that's where she gets across. Mike Nagy, your mm -hmm. former member, mm -hmm. he often will go out the driveway and up the street, and then, and then into the armory driveway. Now, it's particularly problematic in the winter. Per particularly. And, and then, so in the winter, it includes all residents. So people, if they can't step over the pile of snow, they'll go to the driveway, walk up the street, and over. Um, Can so I just ask yeah, you a sure. question, please? That second bush on the left-hand side, you can see a red car. Then there's a bush, a sidewalk. The sidewalk to the right, where WHMP radio station is, yeah. that sidewalk goes all the way around down by the brewery. Yep. Okay. Well, it, it no, kind no. of breaks up. Yeah. Yeah. Break yeah. up. It, it, where does it break up? Before the brewery. Okay, where the parking garages, the city parking garage, are you talking about? Isn't there a curb cut there? There is a, yes, that's Kirkland. Yeah. That's a curb cut. But after that. There's a that, curb cut to. to Cross Kirkland. Yeah. There's no curb cut to cross Hampton Avenue. Yeah. There's only one. Yeah, it's pretty. I have to go on site. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say wherever they put in a sidewalk, they have to do curb cuts. Yeah. So oh, yeah. if there isn't a sidewalk, they have to put the curb cuts in wherever it ends up being. Um, well, what the accessibility? And these pages. What I'm trying to illustrate yeah. here is, in the first page, um, it shows what it looks like looking in both directions on Hampton Avenue from our proposed location is you can see you've got basically a straight shot. Now, the, I, I was talking earlier about, um, I can only conjecture why the why there's opposition to any added mid-block crosswalks in the city, and one reason may be that there was a fatality on New South Street a few years ago, and, and then there was um, a very serious accident on Bridge Street last year. Mm -hmm. And in both cases, it was a question of visibility. The South Street, there was, there's nothing inherently wrong. In all the research I've done across um, engineering websites, 
uh, the National uh, Iowa Safety Board, and all those people, there's nothing inherently wrong with a mid block. The problem is that it doesn't have adequate visibility. So there are things you can do, but also um, there's things, as, as you said before, the geography. So you have a clear shot in both directions from that location. The next page shows further down, and you can see uh, you can, there's a clear shot from Kirkland to Pleasant Street, but if you look from Kirkland toward Cons, there's a curve there. There's also a parking lot there, and it's often has cars. Um, even the Postal Service told me they, ex they exit Kirkland and they have a hard time making that right-hand turn because of visibility. Which picture is the one going towards Cons? The lower one. It says, looking south toward Old South Street. Mm -hmm. Oh, that eventually brings you to Cons. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's the intersection of Old South Street. Well, Cons. this is that little intersection. That is where the Park City's parking garage is. Correct. You come out of the parking garage the back of Thorns Market and all that. So that is that side. How did you know where that is, right? Of the whole parking lot. To access out of the garage and come out that way, you can either go right or left. So um, I also took a. a and it looks a, like there might be a curb cut. I can't tell. Can you have well, it? there is. Um, it's it's not really it's sort of a driveway it's really a driveway in a sense a very large driveway um, i looked at mid-block crosswalks downtown there are at least a dozen as a matter of fact you've got one right over here what mid -block oh crosswalk. right yeah. yeah well that's what they did with Con Street. Yeah. so what they did here was you know they they're designed things you can do to make it safer they have the flashing lights um, you're supposed to have a stop line 10 feet from a crosswalk. You're not supposed to have any parking within 10 feet of a crosswalk. They're all design elements to allow for ad adequate visibility. So I, I guess I have a, a, a problem with the logic that some of the commission, the transportation commission people say, which is it's safer not to have a crosswalk. If it's safer not to have a crosswalk, then let's eliminate all crosswalks and let people jaywalk at will. I, my, my question is that, Patty, if we could ask Transportation and Parking Commission for their minutes of those meetings, because I'd like to read those. Yeah, they're probably on their website. On their they website. have a video, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably, you could, it's probably, we can probably get it through NCTV. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, did you say what date that meeting was that yeah. you went to? I mean, or at least the month. It was the November meeting. November. November. Okay. I have, a, I, have a, yeah. I have a question for you. Yes. Do you do you only work for Northampton or do you do Florence as well? Uh, I don't work for either one. I'm a private businessman. Yeah. So so he's here as well as two members of the public. Well, well, residents of Hamden. Yeah, I should introduce Ann Ann Moore is a resident. And Dominique Lamar is a resident. Because I got hit by a car in, at, in Florence. And so, right. so if we could possibly get the minutes for our next meeting, also if we could possibly, maybe because Ned Huntley is not available anymore, of asking Jim Morello because I did ask if Richard Pasoletti attended that meeting and he said no, he was not there as superintendent of streets, I asked him mm -hmm. that. He wasn't there? I don't, I don't yeah. think so. He's not a commission member. No. Well, he does fill in. If Wayne's not, if um, Ned's not there, Jim fills Well, Ned was there. Okay. Um, but I think somebody needs to come in and talk to us about this because i am very uncomfortable making a decision right now i understand what we're hearing about a crosswalk but i need to read the minutes and i also would like the department heads to attend one of our meetings with you here okay yep. um so can i just ask because i'm looking at this i i 
really feel we got a problem because we have a crosswalk right here on WHMP radio station. We have individuals who are in wheelchairs. Where they're coming out from, I can't tell from here. That's why I need to go on site. But how do they get across the street? Well, that, that's the whole dilemma. It's very difficult. There's no light thing on there. No. Yeah, there can't be no, lights on just all the stop streets. Sign at the end of the streets. Well, then you also on the other side have Hannah. You live on the other side, so you're kind of in the same predicament of um, crossing. And I have a service. Dog I find that to be a dangerous situation. Yeah. So, um, Dominique yes. um, was just saying she has a service dog, and it makes it even harder for her. Well, yeah, because there's two of us in the street now. Mary Bars, did you see that? Uh, do you, have you been to Smith's? Because you don't probably don't know where I got it. Do, do you know where at Smith caused you go there sometimes, Mary Bars? I don't know what she's saying. She, um, when she got hit, that would, we should bring that up at the end, uh, Leticia, for other business so that we can hear what happened. Because yeah. um, that might be something else we need to look at. Yeah, that sounds like yeah. it. Um, so, the, well, I was going to tell you what the status is with the parking lot. So, the December meeting, we were on the agenda. There was a little bit of a mix-up uh, from my point. I, I mixed up what day it was, so I didn't attend, but I found out that they never got to it. They never got beyond public comment that, that night. Oh my goodness. And, and then I asked, and then they said, well, we're reorganizing the commission, yeah. and we didn't have a January meeting, and the earliest we could bring it up again is February, but I don't even know if it will be. Yeah, I can see where you're not having a meeting in January because we just are going into session. Right. So that's understandable. But, Patty, I would like for the month of February if we could get Jim Lorello to come in here, let him know exactly what's happening here. Because I'm in a predicament, I don't know what to say mm -hmm. until I see minutes, until I actually hear of why not place a crosswalk when we have people who are in wheelchairs or even if they're in crutches or small children how do they cross so can i ask you is your concern that they're going to have a meeting in february and this might come up and and they aren't going to have any input from us um, because the most we could do at this point is to say you know this you came to our meeting um, we're going to take this um, under consideration for our February meeting by inviting Jim Lorello. Um, and then, you know, if they could hold off on making a decision in February, if in, in fact they were going to do that. What I'd like to do, if we could, I just thought about this. Mm -hmm. Is there any way, Patty, you could get a hold of Jim Lorello and Richard Pasoletti so we can go on site? Yep. I would like a site visit so that we can over this area and maybe once we find out about the site visit invite him to attend it or the yeah, public sure if they like we'll that way we are knowing exactly what's going on here so in the meantime i can write a letter that yeah. just to um treatment to ryan o'donnell is he still the chair we don't know well that's why i'm going to send it to you um oh, to him and maybe you cc it to i'm sorry what he, he was the chair of that and presumably so we'll get, just to let them know that we're working on this, um, and if if they were going to put it on the agenda and make a decision, if they could wait. I mean, that's what we can do. There's, yeah. And Ian, I think you had something. Right. Just during rush hour, it's really difficult. Oh, I can yeah. imagine. Oh yeah. Now, one thing I was going to say was, um, you know, some people would say, well, you you know, you have to go to the nearest crosswalk, which is Pleasant Street or. Um, or, or, or Old South Street. But, you know, if you look at the map, and I, I would even say, when we had a site visit with the chief of police and with the traffic engineer, neither one of them did that. We, we met them right at the preferred location, which is the entrance to our building. Was that Chief Jody Casper? Yes. And what did she say? She said that um, she understood the issue but she is concerned that people uh, aren't as careful in crosswalks. And that, 
and that was what, that's what Ryan says too. Um, and, I mean, it took two months and a site visit to convince him to just put it on the agenda. But you know, that's that's looking at that's that's the wrong issue, really. If there's an issue with people um, being careless entering a crosswalk, it, that, that doesn't mean well then you eliminate all crosswalks. The logic yeah, doesn't I, follow. I think. And Chris Palamas had mentioned that, that there are disability laws, and maybe, Jen, you could start looking up some of those disability laws for people with disabilities, and I think we might find something in one of these disability laws. If, so because we're going after something right now because of the tree. The city is saying that the tree is fine, but it's not. We have a person that's completely deaf, and the visibility part of his hearing, he can't hear. So we're going to, Chris Palamas is looking at laws, but we're going to come in on that. I, I had said um, a number of times that at crosswalks, they ought to put back, stop, look, and walk. I don't know. Well, Stop looking at the walk. When I was growing up, that's what was at each end of a crosswalk, so that you did you before you just bolted off the sidewalk. You yeah. stopped, you looked, and then you could walk. Mm -hmm. Well, there's definitely um, issues on both sides. The drivers who, who don't, you know, just go right through a crosswalk, and pedestrians who don't look. But that's not really the issue. That's a separate issue. That's an educational thing that I, I, I would hope the, the transportation planning commission takes that on. As a matter of fact, one of our residents who works with NCTV is thinking about making public service announcements on crosswalk safety, both from a driver point of view and and uh, working with the police department and, and a pedestrian point of view. But that's a separate issue. That's yeah. There's definitely a concern. I I you know I don't when I enter a crosswalk, I make eye contact with the driver. I do not. It's the safest forward. thing to do. That's why you did it then. Bang. But I mean, if there, if someone or a group is saying that you know sidewalks are um, dangerous because people don't pay attention, you know, education is part of uh, part of any crosswalk wherever it ends up or where it already is. And, and back to the well, that people should go to Pleasant Street and, and or Old South Street and backtrack to where they want to go. I was trained as an architect, and one thing I learned was people there are patterns. You can, you can design whatever you want to. You can design a, a corner like this, but people are going to walk like this. So, um, any, you know, you, if, if, you, if you do a site visit, you'll, you'll see. That's where people cross right now. Well, I know when I'm down there, that's where I cross. Running yeah. across the road, looking both ways. I made a joke at the, at the, at the commission, but um, I've even seen D.A. Sullivan cross there. So, you know. <laughs> Exactly. What did he say? No, he wasn't there. No. <laughs> okay. I don't think I'd do it to his face. So I guess what we're going to do, and I don't know if anybody has a final comment they might like to make. Tell me? No? Um, can you spell your last name for me? Dunmar. D-E space M-A-R. Thank you. And thank you for being here. You're welcome. And thank you. Can you just put your last name on a piece of paper so okay. I spell it correctly? And I have your last name and I believe M-O-O-R-E. Yeah, thank you very much for coming. So the end result is a letter will go to transportation and parking and also to uh, Jim Lurilla and um, just telling them that this was brought up and where I want to go on a site visit. Yeah, we can do a site visit and then yeah, and also on my request <coughs> is to have them come to that site visit with us. There's a little difference there. I would like them to come on site. Jim Lorello and Richard Pasoletti of Streets, and also a resident on Hamden Avenue, who's brought this, you know, to our okay. attention. So is that you want to do that? I think councils of the barge is interested in oh, having absolutely. you there. Well. Yeah, we've had site visits a number of them with, with the chief of police, with the traffic engineer, and what did Richard Pasolini say? We, uh, no, the traffic engineer is this young woman. Okay, that's a new girl. Yeah, okay. she's new. And what did she say? She said, I'll tell my boss. Okay. Can I go with you, Mary, boss, today?
See, we have all the rights as a commission to request on-site visit. And I think this is what we need to see. We actually need to be there, see the visibility of it. Have you been there, Jim? You must have been. And what is your feelings? Well, I, I know exactly where I cross. I mean, Lorraine was my barber for, for <laughs> 15 years, and she had her barber shop there, and I'd always zip across there. So I, mean, I know exactly what you're talking about. I mean, I park in the garage, and you know, so, uh, I, I, I hear you. And that's why you reached out to me. I thought we should put this on the agenda. All right. So, well, where we'll, we'll do you remember ever going to Pleasant Street to, uh, to cross? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, right, you're right. I usually don't, don't right, right no, across. That's right. right. You never did. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. I hear you. Thank well, you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, all all right. Thank you for coming. Thank you. 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 So here's my name and phone number when, whenever you want to arrange. I'm pretty flexible, but. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to write it and then. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Everybody come and go with you tonight. I would like to have that telephone number and name. Yeah. Oh, she's writing it? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So before we start. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Come again. Thank you. Thank you for attending, members of the public. Thank you. Thank you, Penny. Z A N E. Yes. Thank you. I'd also I wanted to announce that I'd also like to attend the the site visit of. Oh, um, so I think we can all arrange that um, talk about it. Does everybody have emails? Um, I right now. So if you could, if you could call me, I think that that would be better. Do you have a phone? Yes, I do. Yeah, I was going to check with you what your phone number is. Yes, is that your? Is that still your phone number? No. Okay, no. so I haven't had a way to get in touch with you then. Oh no, I, I you have called me. I had given you um, the the new number. You have called me in the okay. past. Right. I can write it down. Yeah, for please. Because you. you did. You left me a message, and um, that was the only phone number that I had written down. So it'd be great to have it. Oh. So I don't know where all your emails went. They're out there in email land. <laughs> Yes, I'm sure they're there. I just, I can't get them right now. Slump it around right somewhere. Thank you. Okay, so no email at this time. Right, no okay. email, but I will let you know. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. Next one. Thank you. I would like to come, Patty. Uh, what I'll do is I'll send an email to everybody. Okay. And um, please do call. To yeah, for, well, for you. Anybody who has an email, um, Councilor Lavarjo, let Gay know. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can CC me. You can CC me, too. So I'll let everyone know by whatever method works. Okay, what's Thank the next one? The time. Okay. The, the proposed time. No, I'm just saying it because I'd like to hit that because then they sure. have to go on that item number two, anyways. Mm -hmm. That's fine. So we're. Um, we're would I you would, like to talk about that? Well, I wasn't the one oh, that put it on the agenda, so whoever oh, oh. proposed that okay. time, because okay. since I've come, it's always been at five, so mm -hmm. whoever is in favor of that maybe speaks first, I guess. Okay, so the, the next time okay. I will talk about that. Okay. The only reason why it's always been four o'clock, and parking and transportation is at four o'clock also, which is a heavy duty meeting. Okay. We've always been four o'clock. Tori asks us if we change it to five. Oh. Ruth McGrath agrees about going back to four o'clock also. I like four o'clock better. It, I think it makes it easier for people during the winter time because it's getting dark out and so forth. Some people have to walk by themselves. So that's why we're asking to go back to four o'clock. Mm -hmm. Also, in the mayor's office, 
I talked with Lynn, the executive secretary, on the Disability Commission. Our meetings, we can have 10 a year. If we wanted two a month, we can do that. We don't have to have 12 meetings a year. And I got that straightened out this week. I think last year we took a month. We didn't need that. We didn't need it in August. We skipped August. We, right. But there's been many a times that we've asked to take January right. off or February off. In the summertime, you'll see where many of the main planning boards, zoning, okay, conservation, social services, veterans, whatever. We go on vacation. People have a life. And I feel the fourth block is a decent time. And I also think we need to look at the 10 meetings a year, not 12. I don't think 12 is necessary. Not unless when we felt there was an emergency or something. I agree to that. So also somebody brought it to my attention, well, if you wanted to do two a month, you could do two, like four o'clock to five. That's one, five to six, that's two. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to alternate it, you could do that. Mm -hmm. So you didn't and have a decide four o'clock. I've been on this committee for how long? And it's always been at four o'clock. And we changed it because of Tory. And I think in fair to everybody, that is the time our meeting always has been. And I'm hearing from people, five o'clock, it's too late. It's just too late. And I think you need to look at people with disabilities. Like me. There you go. So what, what's, what are people's I would say four, I would say four o'clock will be. It might be hard for you, Jim, because you might be in, in... It will depend on the Tuesday. That's exactly right. I mean, sometimes... We can even change the day. <laughs> no, I mean, Wednesday. No, no. Well, I mean, and I have no issue with Tuesday per se. Uh, that's fine. It's, it, 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 whether it was four on a Tuesday or four on a Thursday, yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes I'll be fine. And sometimes if Same I'm stuck in, in Greenfield or something and I get back later because the courts go to 4.30, so yeah. I'll try to make as much as I can. Um, and that, that's I acceptable. Right. Okay, that's fine. But that's acceptable. We yeah. can't spend the day because sometimes it's hard for me. Like, like that's why I can we spend the day. I mean, look at when we have our budget like, hearings. Like, like Wednesday, because Wednesday work, work. But we can't expect everybody to be here all the time. And especially being attorneys. I know I have family members here that are attorneys. And it's busy, yeah. you're in court. Yeah. Hannah, how about you? Um, that's a convenient time. Four o'clock, yes, four o'clock. I think it's just safe for everybody. Can we do Wednesdays or is Tuesdays better? We'll leave it as yeah, Tuesdays, no matter what, because if Jim has to go to court on a Wednesday, yeah. Thursday, or Friday, you never know. Right, and, and just also I'm on the board of NAMI, uh, National Alliance of Mental Illness, and our meetings for them are always on Wednesday. And the funny thing <laughs> is, it's always the third Wednesday of every month, and this meeting is always the third Tuesday. Tuesday. So that's exactly. fine. But if they're both the third Wednesday of the month, yeah, that would be yeah. an issue. Yes, and this is what's yeah. happened to me with my schedule yeah. also. And my schedule is kind of like a band. So. <laughs> so, you know, everybody has a theory schedule. I mean, schedule. nothing says that we can't say. Can we change it in another month? Say something came up and you knew that you weren't going to be around. Let's change the date. Do a Monday if that's, I can go ahead and be, hopefully, I don't know my schedule yet. None of us counselors do. So and it's like, we can rotate dates. Do you work? Um, right now, no. Okay. So you do volunteer work at the Cooley right? And I, and I, and I usually do like, like if just class is gone, then I have to, because I don't get talk. You know Nancy Jacobson. Yeah, right. And I don't want to get cut from her and stuff. So I think we can work something out that is very decent for everybody, but I think we need to look at the big picture at 4 o'clock. So is the next meeting February 16th, is that going to be now at 4? Yes. Well, that's if you vote for We got a vote to for it. So, Hannah, you should ask somebody to make a motion. Who, I, who would like to make a motion about this topic? I, I can. Jenna, I, 
Thank you. Please, please do. Thank you. I would like to make a motion for changing the time on February 16th to make it for four o'clock. All in favor? Can I just say something? Sure. It's not just for February 16th. It's for it's for all, all time. time. But for all for all disability all, for our calendar year. For our calendar year. I like four o'clock better. Thank you. And who's seconding? Who would the, I'll, Thank I'll you. put Mary in the bar. And Jim, I wouldn't worry about it. If okay. you can't make it, you can't make it. It's understandable. We know where you are. No, that's true. <laughs> Mary, you don't know where I am sometimes. I should give you my, my schedule. Hmm? I should give you my schedule. Honey, I had nothing to do with my own schedule. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Can we take, there's only two items left. Can we take the- Can I ask what that, what this is all about, the planning session for the program of the Disability Commission? Yeah, July and January was what we were, for the month of January, the only thing that was gonna be on our agenda was to talk about what our plans were to um, put together for the year, what okay. we wanted to do. Since Ruth had brought that up, mm -hmm. I am asking that, because I think on the minutes, and this is where I'm having a problem, um, she has on here talking about her brochure. That was going to be February. For February. For February, right. Okay. So I'm asking that um, for the month of February, we disregard the Disability Commission brochure of bringing that up, that we talk about we're not going to be able to say what we want to do right. for the whole Plan. session. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's impossible. Yeah. I mean, something might come up where Attorney Winston might say, hey, you know, there's going to be a training offering going on at the district attorney's office for people with disabilities or whatever. I mean, that is something maybe possibly could happen. You don't know. Mm -hmm. Or something else might come up, and we know that we'd like to invite somebody, but because we talk about it at one session mm -hmm. is not enough for me. Because mm -hmm. I think it's gonna take more than that. Yeah. Right. So I'm asking that we disregard for the month of February the brochures okay. and stick strictly with working out a program of activities mm -hmm. okay. for the year. Yeah. Okay, so no um, brochure discussion for February, but instead the planning of our um, year. To the best that we can for just this yeah. one meeting okay. that we have. That's true. Okay. And also, probably, Patty, if you could give us an update on um, Hamden Avenue at that February meeting. And also, if you could give us an update because maybe if Attorney Winston is around, maybe he'd like to come on that site visit. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'll do it. Um, I'll get in touch with everybody either by email or phone yeah. um, to let them know when that meeting gets scheduled. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. All right. The next item on the agenda um, is any other business um, that has not been anticipated for today's meeting. So, should I talk about mine? Yeah, um, can, can, we, can I do something before you decide? Yeah. I'm sure mine's shorter. So yeah. I just wanted to read a letter, or, or actually an email sent by uh, Mike Nagy. Mm -hmm. um, I've been involved with the Disability Commission since its Memorial Hall um, inception. I must now tender my resignation for health reasons. The best of good fortune to the Commission, Michael. So Michael has um, resigned. So I thought I'll send him a letter and just thank him for his years of service. Yes. He... I make that motion that that letter be sent. Second. Thank you. Sure. I also have something. So the other thing I just saw, um, you may have read in the newspaper, but I will be retiring on um, July 6th. So I will not be your ADA coordinator. Um, and the plan will be to hire someone to be the director of senior services who then serves also as the ADA coordinator. So that's 
been great working with everyone. You'll still see me until uh, July. Well, actually, I won't be at a July meeting because you meet the third Tuesday of the month, so I'll see y'all in June at least. I have an idea. Maybe you'd like to join the commission. <laughs> Hey, yes, I'm, I'm being cautious about how much I'm going right. to get involved with to start off with, but, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not one to sit idle. I just don't I know, but it was, it's not a bad idea, Miriam. Um, okay. Um, I also have a, I also have a, um, a short agenda item to mention. Um, I was, um, <coughs> um, on our, on our website, I was also, even though Ruth is not here today, I, I would like to ask her if she could announce, um, I know that this might be put in the uh, minutes of the meeting, but also in the future, if she could put a space on the actual website itself to possibly announce that when there is no meeting, if the meeting has been canceled, Okay, um, Ruth doesn't do the she website. Do um, oh, our our uh, media and marketing person um, okay. handles the website. So, so you're saying announce that there is no meeting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Ruth might not be around. You don't know that, so you can't depend on that. Usually, if there's not a meeting, all the city buildings are closed due to weather. And it's usually right, Patty on the radio. Patty makes calls. I know yeah, Patty has always called and said it's canceled. Yeah. So, so anybody who's a member of the commission, I would email or call, who, you know, just so that I know everybody got contacted. Right. And handing you that phone. So. Yes, they do. So everybody can be notified. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you know, a lot of times, if the if we're closed, let's say we had a meeting scheduled and the building's closed, we wouldn't have access. To, well, mm -hmm. more or less, it wouldn't be on the website because I can't ask an employee to do um, something when they're not. Working. Although I will say the staff here is very uh, accommodating, so but we try to get the word out. I still will call people if mm -hmm. we're closed for um, inclement weather. I would let people know. Okay. The only reason I mention it is um, sometimes you know I have a very busy schedule, yeah. and sometimes I might be able to access it, access it by computer, and it just mm -hmm. you know might be. It's a possibility, you know, um, but I, you know, it's it's still good to contact me if I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could, can I say something? Oh yeah. Um, can I tell you what what happens? I don't. Can I tell you what what happens? Oh yes, uh, please please go ahead. Okay. Um, before Christmas. I was, um, this happened on the 22nd of, of December. I was, I was coming back from, from the movies, and then there are now the things I know she's walking away. She threw herself in the waist room. Oh, okay. here she is. She can hear you. Anyways, um. She has to leave too. Yeah, it's okay, Jim. And then, anyways, I, um. I was going at the crosswalk, I got both ways, and all of a sudden I got hit by a car by a guy. I went over his car. Was it dark? And foggy, and the guy didn't see me. This happened at, at, at Smith College at the, at the campus center. At the campus center crossing Elm Street? The, the, yeah, but the crosswalk, it was, yeah. it was pretty bad, and I had bleeding in my, in my head. I was, I had a panic attack, and it was a newspaper, and, and I got both ways all of a sudden. He, he didn't see me. I got hit by a car, and I, and I still have nightmares, and I'm, I think we need to do something about, about this. About the crosswalk? Mm -hmm. Like, okay, what would, what, what, since you had encountered that as a dangerous situation for you, what would you um, suggest for that crosswalk? There's no, there's no, like, can you, can I show you what, can I show you what I'm talking about? Some, some <coughs> American, American parts, because there's no, like, 
like it, it's flashing light on that thing is is not. It'd be interesting to see if there's a, a street light near there too. No, there's not. Uh, that's the way I'm gonna go home, so I'll check that out. When did this happen? December twenty second. I remember seeing it in the paper. You went to Bay State, mm -hmm. and then um, you were released. Jeff Stitches. Very fortunate. Um, he he got a fine, but no charge. Just a fine, two hundred dollars. That was it. Was it because of the visibility, poor visibility? If it was what cloudy he and. Could have been criminally charged actually. Or at least negligent operation of a motor vehicle. Exactly. Citation to this report. He only got a ticket for two hundred dollars. I don't know if he paid. Paid, but yeah. So yeah, what happened to you? I. I got struck, I got um, bleeding in my head, no, bro no broken bones, but I got like, so I, and they, I, they said I had a concussion. Did you have a concussion? I did, yes I did. Did you just stay awake? Yeah. Wow. You're very fortunate, Letitia. Wow. No, I still have headaches and stuff. But. Wow. There's a lot of crosswalks, I can tell you that ours. Uh -huh. pretty safe, including uh, Prospect Street, the cars go really fast. I actually, I think they're more aware uh, where you got hit, ironically, uh, with these around Smith College, because you've got Smith College campus police that control that very well, and it's Elm Street, uh, but in other areas where there's crosswalks, I think the cars speed even worse than Elm Street. And Elm Street's taken a number of measures over the years to um, uh, not what actually showing Elm Street to put in really visible signs, but it's unfortunate. The, the cop thing was Dr. Dickinson number or something like that, but um, but anyways, um, yeah. Well, so many of the streets is that they're trying to do the traffic counting. Why should you do this out of turn? Sure. Um, let's adjourn our, our meeting today sure, sure. until. Um, oh, Thank you. You're welcome. See you Thank next you. Month at four. Oh, yes. Hi, Jim. So, our next month's meeting is February 16, 2016.